cute. Loved the water. Loved Florida. God, I love that picture. And there he was. I told you he liked to talk. <laughs> Back before cell phones. That's Kevin. Of course, you remember this little person. He was a baby of only two or three weeks old. And um, we, of course, were very excited to bring him home. We had been trying to have a child. And um, we brought him home. And um, that was the beginning. Um, Kevin was... Um, he was a very he was very funny as a child, and as an adult, I mean, he had a wonderful sense of humor. He was very musical. He um, had a beautiful singing voice. He um, he was very smart, and he was um, he was small for his age, so he was always, I think kind of the center of attention because of his humor and but he was also challenging he was the kind of kid that always wanted to do things his way um, a very very uh, caring person he was a caregiver and um, in my old age Kevin would have been my caregiver he was um, very loving, certainly loved animals, um, had a passion for animals. He had dogs. If there was ever a stray dog, Kevin would find the stray, stray dog and bring him home. I think, I think the, his ability to imitate people is what comes back to me. He used to imitate me. And I'd say, I don't sound like that. But I knew I did because he sounded, he could perfectly mimic other people. So I'm sure he was doing a good job of me. Um, but he was, um, he was very warm, very insightful, extremely sensitive, um, very, you know, he'd get very upset about anything he thought was not just wasn't right. Um, he, I don't, he wasn't political, but he was very caring, you know, and um, I don't know what he'd have to say about what's going on today. That would be interesting. He found a written note to a woman that he was um, they were living together, and it was written in November. I, and in November of 2012, Kevin had made the decision to end his life. And so, I don't know why he decided on the 23rd of March, 2013, that that was the day and time he was going to end his life, but Certainly, the decision had been made. Um, it was a Sunday, and we were, had gone to church, and we were driving um, up to visit friends in Ann Arbor. We got a phone call from our second son, who was also living in Florida, r across the street from Kevin. And um, he was crying and, and saying, you've got to get down here, you've got to get down here. Who told us that Kevin had died, had taken his own life. And um, We turned around and came home. And we were on a plane that late afternoon. That was the worst moment of my life. I mean, I'll never forget that. And it's, um, 
something I don't dwell on, but... Um, it's impossible to try and put into words all of the things that are going through your mind. Um, you know your life is different because um, a part of your life is gone. So it's not something I'll, I'll ever get over. Um, so, but you'll never, you'll never get over the loss. And it's always difficult to, when someone asks, how many children do you have? And I always say three, our oldest son, we lost, but you always, they're always part of your life. Suicide uh, is an extreme psychological event. It refers to someone taking their own life. Uh, sometimes the term is used a little more broadly uh, to refer to behaviors that surround the act of suicide itself. One of the things we know is that there is no defining set of behaviors uh, common to all people who suicide. Different people commit suicide for very different reasons. Most often people who commit suicide are depressed, but most people who are depressed don't commit suicide. Uh, often people who commit suicide are uh, radically bereft of other supports or resources, but there are also cases where, where that's not so, and they're surrounded by loving, caring people and have ample finances and, and personal resources. Uh, so there are things that are somewhat mysterious about it. It's not something that's entirely known. Um. It's been five and a half years since Kev Kevin ended his life. And um, it's a major loss. And I don't think um, either Mrs. Urso and I have ever gotten over it. What we've been able to do is take all of that negative energy and sadness and, and apply it to what we believe is a, a, a charitable organization that's doing good work. Um, and I suppose that has been for us um, a uh, a pain reliever. Not every family is the same. They're not the same because of differences in culture or religion or psychology or all kinds of differences. And it would be important for the differences to be known and respected in trying to work out how to help a family that suffered such a devastating loss. Um, I hope that families who have lost someone due to suicide um, would have the courage and the strength to reach out to a mental health professional or a member of the clergy so that they can get some help and support uh, in the healing that would be useful for their particular family, because every family would be different. What helps one family might not help another family. The reason, the reason we decided to do that was because we, after Kevin died, realized how common suicide is, how there were all these wonderful organizations that were working to prevent suicides. 
there were all these books they had been written, experts out there, and we didn't know any of that. And we thought if we didn't know that, a lot of other people don't know that. So we decided to try to do what we could to get the word out. And um, so we got a group of people together and formed a board of directors and formed um, Kevin saw on the as a nonprofit corporation, but um, it was in the beginning we decided we wanted how could we get the word out. That was that was the issue, and um, that's when we decided to have a conference to try and have a film made and to have a website that would provide good resources for people and. Um, and that's, that was the purpose of it. And it's just continued to grow. And, um, I think we're, I think we're doing what we set out to do. It's just, there's so much to be done.